This is Grow With The Bros, hosted by Ryan and Ken Parsons, founders of the Brothers That Just Do Gutters. Welcome to another episode of Out of the Gutter, Behind the Brother. We've made every mistake in the book, so you don't have to. Our time to evolve as business owners is now. Let's grow together. So on today's episode, we are going to be talking with Rich Beyer, uh, Jacksonville, Florida franchisee. Welcome, Rich Beyer. Welcome, Thank you Rich. very much. How's it going? Going pretty good. It's going great. Nice. All right. So we're going to hop right in. I'd love for you to give us just a little bit of your background, and then we're going to kind of hop into how you ended up becoming a franchise and uh, all that fun stuff. So tell us a little bit about you and your background. Yeah, just a real short synopsis. Um, I grew up overseas in Japan, lived there for about 15 years. And uh, because, you know, you grow up overseas, you want to, it's interesting because you want to do something, quote unquote, American to get in touch with, you know, where you're from. And so when I got to college uh, in San Francisco, I decided to join ROTC, got an ROTC scholarship. Of course, nothing in this life is free. So, you know, they paid for school. I owed them time. It was a great experience to, you know, serve the country and learn some leadership and meet some great people and uh, really had a good time. I spent six years in the military, got out, went to grad school to relearn everything from business school that I forgot six (laughs) years ago. Um, And, uh, you know, shortly after that, I went into corporate America and, um, you know, I served as the chief operating officer the last 10 years for three small companies and, you know, I've got the big company experience, small company experience, and, um, you know, learned a lot from both, both of those uh, experiences. Now, as a, a chief operations officer, what, what do you kind of do? What's the, the day in the life of in that kind of a position? So the day in the life is you're managing everything. Um, you're responsible for pretty much every aspect of that company. And you know, I, I started doing that at fairly young, young age with corporate America, where you're a regional manager, and you're kind of in charge of everything, but there's an HR department, there's a finance department, an accounting department. When you're running things uh, at a smaller scale, so the companies I ran were between 5 million annual revenue and 20 million. That's when, you know, you're responsible for all those departments. You're responsible for finding the people the right you know, the right people on the bus to, to make sure that all of those various entities inside that corporate structure work and they're doing well. So I, I found a home with small companies versus uh, the larger Fortune 500 companies um, because you're a bigger fish in a smaller pond. You have more influence. I love the camaraderie aspect of it. You can hire who you want. You can keep who you want. Uh, maybe let go of somebody that's uh, a cancer in the organization a little bit easier than corporate America. Uh, But I also found that it's not any less risky to be with a small company than a big company. Big companies have downsizes, they have relocations. Um, Sometimes departments or divisions or regions, you know, get uh, divested and you're out of a job, you're forced to move or worse, you're out of a, you know, you're, they, they let you go. Uh, in small companies, um, the same thing happens. You know, small. You know, you can see it this year. A lot of small businesses going out of business. In my case, uh, I guess I did a good enough job that you know, for these business owners, that they felt that after four or five years, they were going to sell that asset and move on to something else. And so, what's that? What's that do for you, as the guy running everything? Like, hey, thanks, Rich. Now you got to go find another job. Wow. So after doing that, times, that's when I decided, you know, I have enough business experience, leadership experience. I'm going to go out and do something for myself. Yeah, so take us down that path. This one's really interesting. So you actually started researching franchises to buy, and, and, and how we ended up here is really interesting. I'd love to hear about that. And how, how long ago before you actually bought a franchise – was were you looking at franchises long time you know my story ken that's why you're asking it i've <laughs> looked at franchise from the minute that i was getting out of the military 
And it's one of those things, if I would have known then what I know now, I probably would have pulled the trigger when I was 28, 29, 30. Um, I went to grad school for entrepreneurship and because I had that bug, that entrepreneurial bug. And instead of opening up my own business, I went to work for Aramark, which was one of the largest companies in the world. <laughs> so, you know, it's like I went the opposite way. Now, with Aramark, there was a lot of entrepreneurial spirit. I ran a region for them. I got some great experience. But like I said, you know, a few years ago, I decided to branch out on my own. Um, I knew business, I knew recruiting, and I decided that I was going to become a business consultant. So one of the last places that I was, quote, unquote, a COO is really an interim consultant helping them uh, with their business. And I did that for about two years. And then I branched out completely on my own. I found franchise consulting and I felt that, well, you know, after looking at franchises, working with franchise brokers over the past 20 years, 15 years, really taking some serious looks at, at many franchises over the years, I said, well, you know, I, I used to be a recruiter. I know business. This seems like a great idea where I can help other people um, find franchises and maybe do it a slightly different than some other brokers that I had worked with personally. Um, you're asking people to take a, a pretty huge leap of faith, leave the comfort zone of corporate America, that the benefits, the paycheck. And, you know, a lot of times you get pressured into doing that. And uh, I didn't want to be that kind of a broker where I was pressuring somebody to make a decision. Um, but, uh, it really gave me a chance to work with individuals and how I found you guys was, as you know, I started sending candidates to all sorts of different franchises and I'd send you guys some candidates. Hey, take a look at this guy. Take a look at this guy. And I, I would tell these people, you know, this is a great business. I've talked to Ken many times. Uh, you know, I've done the research. I've been on umpteen conference calls and, um, you know, for me, it was one of those things where. Uh, I never wanted to get the question from a, a candidate that I was working with or, you know, uh, a prospect that, that I was working with, a client. Um, hey, Rich, have you done this? You know, have, have you picked a franchise? Are you doing it? So to me, I wanted to prove the model. And in order to prove the model, you need to pull the trigger on something. And in order to pull the trigger on something, you got to do the research. What's up? You know, what do you have an interest in? It doesn't have to be a passion but what do you have an interest in? My interest was in home services because I saw the growth in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, and then what is there a need for in your area? Well, my house and I have a rental house, both didn't have gutters. And every time it rained, I'm out there sweeping mulch off the sidewalk, to put it back in place. And, you know, you have the erosion around the house and you're filling it up with dirt. So, from a need standpoint, this business really made a lot of sense for me. And then, um, you know, if you get that far down the franchise path, you want to meet the people that you, you're going to eventually do business with and partner with. And so, you know, flying up to Discovery Day was the, the mm -hmm. time that I met Ken and Ryan and their whole team, very impressed. And, you know, that's part of the process of, of picking something that works for you. And for me, this made total sense. That is awesome. I love awesome. that. That's great. Oh man, there. Uh, <laughs> what did you say in there? There was something I, I that really stood out, but you know, it, it'll come back to me. So all right. So now you're translating. So you did the the franchise consultant, and then you ended up buying a franchise, right? So that you can actually, you know, s experience this yourself. And all of that, so now you've got your army experience, you're, you're probably one of the most educated, you know, franchisees we have with your degrees, your corporate America, your recruiting and your army experience. How did that kind of uh, translate into what you're doing now as a business owner, um, at least, you know, in the Brothers That Just Do Gutters system? So, you know, everybody has a different way of, of you know, operating a business. For me, I need to know everybody's job. I don't have to be perfect at it. 
I knew that I was never going to be hanging any gutters. Um, that, that was, you know, a promise that I made myself that if the business gets that bad, that they need rich buyer to go up and hang gutters. No, you hire experts in those areas that are way smarter than you that have done it for a longer time or have the a background in the trades, carpentry, construction. Um, you hire people that are better, better than you. You know, as far as me, the skills that I brought to the table were, you know, the delegation, the adapt adaptability, you know, um, being able to juggle a lot of, I, saw, I, I say glass balls, because not one of these glass balls can drop. So that ability to be able to handle multiple tasks and, and uh, manage multiple departments at once. Um, you know, those are all skill sets that kind of I learned over, over time. You know, of course, my goals for this business would be to have a self-sustaining company. That should be the goal for anybody that buys this franchise or any franchise or starts their own business is that at some point, that business should operate with or without you. A company lives on, people don't. Um, so theoretically, uh, if I were to leave tomorrow, Brothers Coast Jacksonville in this company should be able to survive with or without me. Great. And that's the company, and I'm not quite there yet, but that's all by design and by plan so that I know every aspect of the company. I can fill those seats um, with the right people. Uh, if you have ever read the book, e that you know, those are things, and there's other books as well, but those are things where you create a blank organizational chart, and eventually you start filling names of people that you can count on, people that have the same mentality, uh, they appreciate the culture of what you're trying to build, something sustainable, something with an opportunity for everyone, and um, eventually, that's the situation that I'm in right now, you start shedding some of the things that you do, and giving up some of those responsibilities to somebody else that wants them, that wants to earn them and wants to make more money or wants that opportunity. Wow. So you had like a bunch of transferable skills from management to recruiting um, to, you know, even the technology side. Was there anything new that you had to learn? Like something that was like, oh, wow, uh, this is the first time I'm wearing this hat in my career. <laughs> anything like that? Absolutely. You know, um, of course, the, two, the obvious thing is learning construction. I did not come from a construction background. And that's another thing. When I say prove the model, I literally wanted to prove the model because there is countless franchises out there that tell you, well, you don't need any experience. And, you know, Brothers Gutters was one of them. Well, I wanted to prove that. I don't have construction background. Um, can a guy like me come out of corporate America, buy a contractor services company, and be successful? And so the answer is obviously, yes, you can be successful. Uh, but the things that I had to learn, I mean, you know, you, you get into the trades, you get into construction services, uh, home services, obviously gutters. Now you're learning about fascia and soffit, gutter guards. You have to be a student of this business. You have to be willing to learn things that you never knew before. Now I know all sorts of things that I never thought I'd know, like what's a hidden hanger and, you know, what's the difference between a low quality hidden hanger and a high quality one and <laughs> inside nuts and things like that. So you have to become a student of the business, number one. The other thing that I am still learning is that the things that they don't teach you in business is corporate structure and what works better and for what size and, you know, uh, tax advantages to one over the other. So, you know, we're going through the process right now where, you know, as we grow and, you know, when I started, I was going on a draw. Well, that's not good for, you know, as you get bigger, you might want to take a paycheck or, you know, things like that. And so those kinds of things are definitely growing pains, but you know, very interesting to learn what type or what structure of company works best for, you know, whatever stage you're in. Yeah. And that, and that's really interesting because as a, as a franchiser, we get asked those questions and we'll say, Hey, listen, I know in New York, 
you know, you want to take at least a reasonable salary at some point, and then you want to do a draw because there's tax advantages, but it's always kind of like, but talk to your accountant, talk to your lawyer, what the best business structure is because it's not universal. Well, that's the thing, right? You know, you, if, if you're trying to do something, you want to talk to somebody who's an expert in that field. And so, you know, you consult with a CPA, a tax, a tax attorney, and find the best, best structure. Because they're going to ask you questions like, okay, well, what are your goals? Well, if you just want to be, you know, a one or two truck type company, um, half a million to a million dollar business, your goals might be different than somebody else's that wants to have, you know, four or five trucks and do two to $3 million in business. Yeah, no, that's great. And I know, I know, um, one, you said something earlier, how you like to kind of understand every aspect of the business. You've done everything from the admin side to the sales side. Um, you've been on installs and I know, um, you know, the business really well. One of the hats that you did wear for a while, I don't know if you've uh, mentioned this earlier in your career, you, you wore the sales hat and you actually did really quite well, uh, with that. Was that the first time you ever put on the sales hat before? So I was with a company called Robert Half, which is a recruiting company. I was with their uh, consulting uh, division. So half of it was recruiting and finding good, good consultants for, you know, larger companies here in Jacksonville. Uh, the other half of it was selling. So the other half was going to CEOs and CFOs and, and selling your services. So I did that for about three years in my career. So I've got some sales experience with Aramark. I had a bit of sales where, you know, you offered other lines of services within the Aramark brand. I've had a little bit of sales, but this is, this is definitely, um, you know, I would say that the, the, and this is one of the reasons why I chose brothers gutters. It was a softer sale. Um, they're scheduling an appointment with you and you're trying to help them solve a need and provide them with a solution. And so, you know, the closing rate, rate among franchisees, and this is something that we talked about with Ken at the very beginning, um, you know, those are things where, you know, you're going in as a, as a consultant pretty much, and you're trying to solve some, some issue for the homeowner and the sales a little bit softer. And it's a, it's not, I wouldn't say it's easy, um, but it's definitely you're trying, you know, as, when you go in and somebody calls you and they really need your help, uh, that's a lot different than cold calling somebody and saying, Hey, I've got some life insurance to it for you. And, uh, heard you just had a baby and, uh, you should get insured through me. That's yeah. a lot harder than uh, showing up uh, at a scheduled appointment. Um, so yeah, it was, it was tough to do that role and also, build a company, start a company and build a company. But again, um, I feel like I'm better off for it because I understand the sales process and I can mentor the other two guys that, um, that I have in that role now. Yeah. You, you know what you can demand, right? Because you've done it and you've seen what's possible and it's easier to say, Hey, we got to get that close rate up a bit. <laughs> well, no pressure to my, uh, I did the sales role, still maintain a 40, 40 to 50% closing ratio still sold, you know, 40 to $60,000 of gutters a month just by myself running the company, recruiting, uh, paying the bills, doing everything with this company. So I tell all the guys, no pressure, you know, but I did it and I ran the company. This is all you got to do to so do it well, I uh, but I, su I right. support them. Yeah, we just hired our second salesperson. He was uh, he was an installer, a senior installer that was ready to become a crew leader, and uh, he took interest in the sales role. So I think that we're gonna build a really great team. Uh, Adam is the guy that I've had on for about a year. He's crushing it. Brad is the person that I brought on to um, that was the installer that entered the sales position, and with his background. Um, as an installer, understanding homes and fascia and gutters and carpentry and construction, I think that he's going to provide a lot of value to uh, future customers. That is so cool. So you, you, you said something in there that kind of made me uh, want to go back to one of the other questions um, that, I, that I wanted to ask. 
when you got into franchise consulting, you were obviously knew a lot about a lot of different franchise opportunities, ones that you've looked at for yourself prior to becoming a consultant, and then ones that popped up that others might have been interested in. What was it that stood out about the brothers that just do gutters that given there's a ton in the price range you were looking at, um, what, how did you narrow it down to us? Yeah, because there's yeah. only like 4,000 franchises in the world, right? <laughs> that's, that's, I think, the new number. Globally, there's like 4,000 franchise opportunities out there. So it's pretty cool. It, uh, so honestly, from the, from the times that I, so I was on maybe, maybe I want to say maybe half a dozen conference calls with Ken with the other clients listening to the pitch um, through IFPG, uh, the International Franchise Professionals Group. There's a lot of information about all the franchises, but a lot of information about Brothers Gutters as well. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, if you've got that bug and you've looked at various opportunities, whether it's a franchise or not, you kind of know what you're looking for, um, something special, something that stands out, something that's a little bit different. Um, for example, years ago, I don't even know, maybe eight or nine years ago, I looked at a, uh, a paint franchise, pretty well-known paint, paint franchise in the U.S. And it was a resale, so the business is already up and running. And then, you know, I just kind of did some research, and I went on Craigslist and went online, and man, there's a lot of paint, paint businesses out there. There's a lot of people on Craigslist offering paint solutions, and I just didn't want to be another painter or another paint organization. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I think that if somebody has that passion it's, uh, and it's right for them, then that's different. And those franchises are pretty good, by the way. But for me, I wanted something a little bit different. So I decided to have some one-on-ones with Ken and then look at the territory and look at the, you know, the ratios of, all right, how many leads do I need? What's the average sale? Those are all questions that you would ask for any opportunity. Um, and then, you know, really importantly was coming up to discovery day. So meeting the team. Um, but the things that uh, stood out for me regarding brothers gutters and the reason why I finally got to a place in life where I could pull the trigger, um, was that, Number one, I could get financing for it, $150,000 SBA loan, and, you know, that gets you in business. Um, a lot of people in my situation, you don't have much more than that. You might have some of that in retirement, but why would you want to take that stuff out of your IRA or out of your retirement savings to start a business? Um, so one was access to capital. Uh, number two was going to Discovery Day, meeting Ryan, meeting Ken, meeting the rest of their team. So you meet one person, well, you know, then you meet, and that's impressive. You meet a second person, and then you meet the third or the fourth, and, and then you meet the contact center. So that, in the marketing team, so meeting Ken and Ryan was really important and finding out what's, you know, what drives you. And all the things that drive Ken and Ryan drove me too. You know, the books, Who Moved My Cheese, and uh, Raving Fans, and all these things, uh, you know, The Go-Getter. I mean, those are books that I read when I was in the military, when I was with Aramark. And so introducing those types of um, reading materials to your team was invaluable. I thought that that was special. I didn't see any other franchise doing that. Um, meeting the rest of the team. And then the really important things uh, that led me to this, to this decision was being the contact center, knowing that I wasn't going to hire, have to hire one or two people in an office. I didn't have an office. I had my home office, what I'm sitting in right now. I didn't have the ability to hire one or two people to answer phone calls all day and respond to emails and schedule estimates or, or jobs or things of that nature. So having the contact center is really important. And then the kicker was probably the marketing department, being able to provide the expertise um, with digital marketing uh, and provide you with leads. So I bought the franchise in January. It came up for, you know, went through Discovery Day and all that. Uh, came up for training in April. By the end of April, beginning of May, my schedule was loaded with estimates. So, you know, it's one of those things where 
at some point you you've done the research that you need to do you've done the performas you've done the evaluations you've done the validation calls and at some point you got to pull the trigger and for me the best choice was brothers gutters well we appreciate that that was awesome <laughs> i love that yeah. very awesome. very cool so all right you have corporate you sell the best choice <laughs> What's that? <laughs> said, is it, is it still the best choice? <laughs> two, two years down the road now, right? You know, anything that you do and anything that you start is going to be scary, no matter what. You start your own business, it's going to be scary. You move to another job, it's going to be scary. There's things you're going to be learning. If you take another job with another company in another space and you're doing something a little bit different, it's going to be scary. For me, um, I needed to protect myself. I knew what I could do. I could run a business. Um, and, you know, do I want to go out there and get another job, earn a paycheck and benefits? Those are all great things. But I needed to build an asset. So I needed to replace my income and eventually build something that's sustainable if I wanted to keep it forever I could or build an asset that later on 10, 20 years down the road that you can sell. Um, those are the reasons that people start businesses. And I didn't want to go to another company, run it and have it sold or me or the division be downsized or have to relocate. Um, I've got a neighbor that works for a big medical company and he got a promotion and he's moving to you know, Dallas. I don't want to do that anymore. I've done that. I was relocated in the military. Then I got to Aramark. They relocated me five times in five years. When you start a family and you, you put down some roots, you don't want to do that anymore. And so at, for, for me personally, I had to take control over my life. What can I do? And, you know, what's the best route to go that way? Um, so, you know, those are, those are some, you know, you asked about growing pains. Yeah. You know, do I still feel that way? Yeah, I still feel that way, you know, but it's not painless. It, it's, it's, it's hard. Anything you do is going to be hard if you want to be successful at it. Um, with this business, my pains have been growing pains, plain and simple. Um, but the light at the end of the tunnel is as I shed some of the responsibilities that I do, I've passed up sales. I don't do sales anymore. I will, I can kind of just uh, fill in if somebody wants to take a few days off or whatever. Um, but I've passed on that duty. Now, eventually I'll have an administrative assistant. Eventually I'll have an operations manager to do the ordering and scheduling and picking up the materials. Um, all of those things are just growing pains. You know, eventually I'm gonna have a company that's sustainable that I can work on the business instead of in it. And that's the goal is that the company is sustainable with or without me. Um, I tell my guys all the time, you don't want me picking up materials. You want me at Jack's chamber or the St. John's chamber. You want me drumming up business. You want me meeting with, uh, you know, general contractors and roofers and real estate agents and property managers. That's where you want me. That's my value add to this company. And you want me there because without me being there, that stunts your growth. You want this company to continue to grow so that you can move up and you can achieve some of your own personal goals, whether that become a crew leader or a senior crew leader or an operations manager or a field supervisor. You know, field supervisors in the skills ladder, they're managing four to six crews. And, you know, that's a probably a seventy to $100,000 a year job. Yep. That is no for somebody that doesn't have a college education um, or they do or whatever, that's still a great income for somebody uh, that can take that role in the future internally. Um, so, but anyways, the point is, is that, you know, the pains that I've had with this business, uh, yes, it's been the right decision and it's been growing pains and those pains, you know, you gotta, you gotta take a step back and you say, wait a minute, you know, are, are these pains because I'm, my business is hurting? And I'm so blessed. I think we all are in this industry in construction 
uh, to be a, um, you know, like a, a vital business or um, an essential business. Mm. Uh, very blessed and very grateful. And my guys are, have been working through this entire pandemic. We did slow down in April, but we've, we've come through it. But going back to, yeah, this has absolutely been the best decision. And the pains that you have are, the, are, are good pains. Growing pains are, are good pains. And sometimes you have to take a step back to realize, oh, hold on a sec. This, <laughs> this, is, a, not, this is not a bad thing. Let me try to figure it out. And that's, that's another thing. You know, if you've managed other people and managed other divisions or, or business units, you figure things out, um, especially ex-military being able to make decisions on the fly and, and, uh, you know, hope that they're the best ones and, and, uh, you know, may be adaptable, uh, if they're not and come up with other solutions and, um, you know, bring in some of the talent and some of the expertise from the guys on your team that might know this, you know, gutters a little bit better than you. So relying on other, other people for, for good decisions as well. And relying on the franchise, to be honest. I mean, how many times I call you guys to ask for certain specific questions about this industry, about growth, about personnel, yep. and the guys, that's well, the guys in the Brothers Cutters franchise, franchisee system, and also the franchise system, there's unlimited people to call for help and support. So I think yeah. I love the uh, the Slack channel we have, you know, people put out a random like, what would you guys do in this situation on this type of roof? And to have a bunch of people have ideas that are all valuable is, is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jimmy a bunch of times and Nathan a bunch of times and Jeremiah a bunch of times. And we even had a commercial job that we didn't have a whole lot of expertise in called Ken called Jeremiah. They're like, I tell you what, if we get this job, I'm flying you guys down to help me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So this is awesome. Um, we've covered, you know, basically, you know, as a veteran coming from corporate America, having no gutter experience, now being in the franchise industry. Um, I love what you were talking about uh, earlier about building an asset for yourself. You know, you've got retirement, you've got some of the benefits of corporate America and the things that you can do there. But you wanted something that could run without you at some point, whether it continues to bring you a paycheck or there's a big, you know, multi-million dollar payout someday for the whole business. Is that, am I grasping that correctly? Yeah. You know, when, if all things are equal, let's just say you get paid, you know, eventually with any business, whether it's on your own or it's brothers gutters or it's another franchise, you know, the goal is to replace your income. That's why guys like me leave corporate America to make less no you want to make the same and maybe more um but the first and foremost is to replace your income so that you can continue to live that lifestyle that you you've lived you're comfortable with you can pay the mortgage you can put food on the table you can buy braces and you know take you know put your kids in camp or you know take a vacation once in a while um you want to try to replace that income and so if all things are equal um whether you're working with a company or you buy a franchise, um, why wouldn't you want to make the same in 10 years down the road, have an asset that you can, you know, add to your net worth. Um, so for me, it was a no brainer. It was also a way for me to protect myself. Yes, it is. You've got to take a leap of faith and yes, it is, uh, could be considered risky. That's why I love, franchises. That's why that made sense to me. A lot of people might say, oh, well, you know, you know you're know, paying seven or eight percent or 10 percent, depending on the franchise. You know, why would you want to start your, you know, start a franchise when you can just do it yourself? I can tell you with 100 percent certainty, if I started Rich Buyers Gutters in Jacksonville, Florida, I wouldn't even be a tenth where I'm at right now. And so that, that's why you buy a franchise for the brand, for the support, for the marketing and all of that. But um, with all things being equal, that, that's for me was to protect myself. Yes, it's a risky move. Yes, you got to take a leap of faith. But for me, it was, I can run a business. This business has been, this franchise has been validated. 
Um, a bank is going to loan me money to start this franchise, um, especially as time goes on for other franchisees looking at this opportunity. Now you're going to have, you won't have two or three franchisees out there, you know, or maybe there's four or five when I started. Now you're going to have, you know, close to 20 or more. Um, there's a validation process that is a lot, is going to become a lot easier for people for this particular opportunity. And, um, you know, bottom line was I needed to protect myself, my family. I didn't want to get downsized. I didn't want to build somebody else's company and say, Hey, thanks a lot. I'm going to sell the company now. Um, and I didn't want to move and I didn't want to go from job to job. So I, I, you know, I, I took this opportunity because it seemed like the best one at the time after all my research and I pulled the trigger and um, I'm building something year after year. And you, you guys know my growth and yeah. I can go through that call if you want me to, but I went oh, yeah, from- no, We're going to talk about that. I just have one more question uh, based on what you said. Um, a business in your portfolio. So let's fast forward 10, 15 years from now, like- you know, educate me a little bit. Like um, when you're talking about having like a successful business in your portfolio, what does that do for you? Or what is, what opportunities does that give you? Why would you want that? Tell, tell me a little bit more about that. So, you know, if you read books by guys like Robert Kiyosaki, um, you want something that protects you and your family in the case that for me, I have a bad back. I had a major back surgery coming out of the military. And throughout the years, I've had some scares where I thought I needed to have another back surgery. Well, my back surgery put me out of work for six months. Well, no company is going to want you back if you just took six months off. They might give you a few weeks off. They might give you a month or two off. And yes, they might allow you to take uh, you know, some sort of leave um, through Cobra or whatever, but um, if that job fills up, um, your your job's gone, and you know it's it's all a legal way. So for me, it was you want to build something that's sustainable, and you want to build something that provides you an income, whether you're there or not. Um, and for me, so for me, it was like, well, if I have back surgery and I'm out six months, I need something that's going to provide my family with income, be able to pay the mortgage, put food on the table. Um, but let's, that's, that's kind of a dreary way to look at it. The positive way to look at it is what can I build? Like if I wanted to take my family on a one month vacation in corporate America, they don't allow that. But if I have, you know, my goal is to hire somebody like me 15, 20 years ago, that's in, you know, 30 or 35 years old running a $5 million company and um, being able to take care of everything. Like I took care of it for other owners. Um, that if I wanted to take my, vic um, my family on vacation that I could. Um, so at the, at the end of the day to provide you with, um, freedoms in your own time and, and financial freedoms as well. And, uh, in my opinion, the only way to do that is, uh, through business ownership. That's awesome. I love that. That's great. So we're, we're two years in with you, right? This is this second or you're in your third season yeah uh, going in my third season into your third season so nice. from starting you know just you know rich buyer and you know getting a trying to build a crew and find the guys to where you are today why don't you kind of tell us where you're at today and then we, i'd love to hear you kind of say where you want to be in the next you know one to three years what, what do you picture happening all right yeah um, so in 2018, so I got started in April, I had one truck, um, bought it up in New York. You guys outfitted it, drove it myself back down to Jacksonville. And I was like, all right, here I go. You know, I hope <laughs> and uh, like I said, you know, estimates came in. Um, I got a team started and pretty quickly within four months, we expanded to two trucks. I noticed that in Jacksonville with a lot of Spanish tile roofs, I needed a seven inch machine. So um, I got a different combo machine, not, not to get into the, 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 uh, the specifics, but a six inch and seven inch combo 
I bought another truck. It provided me with the opportunity to expand. Um, we were lucky enough to get some commercial jobs, so I hired more people. Um, basically, the market pretty much di dictates, you know, how you know, how you're going to grow, how fast you're going to grow. Um, you got a lot of commercial work right out the gate, too. Yeah, right out. Yeah, I was pretty lucky. Um, and, you know, so that's what I tell the team is, like, you know, we want to get back and, and uh, you know, continue to have that commercial uh, info, influx of, biz, uh, of business. Um, but you can't do it with just two crews. So basically 2018 and 2019, I rode through the whole year with two crews, um, pretty much doubled the revenue from year over year. Of course, 2018 was a partial year. I think we, you know, April to December. So we missed about four or five months there, but um, double our revenue. And then this year, We'll probably, I would guess, we will probably break a million dollars. And in August, actually today, after this call, I'm taking a new truck to one of our suppliers, and they're going to put in a brand new six-inch machine. Nice. Just by the end of the month, uh, probably not the end of the month, probably next week or the week yeah. after, we'll have a third crew running. Wow. And so those things where you know it's the chicken and the egg and and it's pretty difficult to grow especially if you like me and you're a perfectionist you want the right people in the right seats on the on the bus going the right direction um those are all kind of like you read the book uh, good to great by jim collins you want the right people in the bus and you're all going the same direction and it took me a while to get there, but like I said earlier in the call, moving Brad from installation into sales, he's already doing really well. So if we just cap three trucks through the end of the year, we'll grow another 20% this year. And next year, if Brad does what Adam's doing, they'll keep they'll each keep two crews busy. So um, I would imagine that by November, December, I'm looking at a fourth truck. I've already got seven guys on seven installers so one team is going to have three the other two teams are going to have two each so really um my recruiting efforts just went down it doesn't mean that i'm going to relax on recruiting as you guys know recruiting is the key to any business and especially this one but hiring another person to do by the end of the year um will uh you know, we'll set us up for a fourth crew going into 2021. So 2021, four crews, that's a 1.5 to $2 million business, as you guys know. Um, as far as future growth, you know, three to five years from now, uh, I'm a big proponent, and I think Ken said this a long time ago, is that the, the market's going to dictate, you know, how you grow and, and what you do. So, you know, for us, we've got three avenues of growth and we can do all three if we wanted to. One is to buy another territory or two, expand west, expand west out to Orange Park, Clay County, mm -hmm. Gainesville, south down to Daytona, um, you know, uh, Putnam County and, and uh, like Palm Coast and Flagler County and, and those areas. Um, so that's one is expansion. Two is uh, getting commercial work. Um, we've got a, a lead into, you know, commercial box gutters and warehouses and things that are very specialty. No other gutter company that I know of in town doing anything like that. So um, I'd really like to look at the commercial aspect to kind of diversify our sales a little bit um, outside of residential, not just townhomes and condominiums for property managers, but real commercial with box gutters for warehouses and and uh, those types of uh, structures. Wow. Um, so that's uh, that, those are the two opportunities. The third is right. to look at a line of business. Um, I've always said that, you know, gutters and irrigation sort of go hand in hand. There's a lot of opportunities for customers, maybe at least one out of every five sales, the customers back their property backs up to a preserve or a retention pond, putting in French drains would be would add to our sales and provide them with a better solution. And we're having to outsource that right now. So that's, that's a third. Definitely an opportunity there. 
Yeah. So in, that's in, it right there, right? Opportunity. I mean, look at all the opportunity. You know, I hear people, oh, it's a franchise. I want to use somebody local. But look, look at what a franchise system does uh, for a local economy, local people. It creates jobs. It stimulates the local economy. And you're doing all that by creating opportunity, especially growth. You know, when you're scaling up a business um, and expanding and have that kind of mindset that you have, Rich, it's, it's uh, creating opportunities not just for you, but it's creating opportunities for other people to hit their personal goals and stuff. I mean, you know, it, in, in, especially in our industry, there's not really, I don't see too many other gutter companies running uh, an opportunity like you are there in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, and, and creating these job positions and pathway, career pathways that, you know, what other company has a guy going from installer and then shifting over and, and, and now he's in sales. I mean, that's, that's a huge bump in income and a whole, you know, especially for guys in, uh, I guess in the trades, you see a lot of guys that are, you know, it's, you know, young guys going up and down ladders and on roofs, but at some point, you know, they have all this knowledge and, you know, you're talking about them reading books and, you know, becoming a better version of themselves at some point that creates, um, an exit for them, you know, as they start aging out and maybe wanting to take that knowledge and stuff that they learned, you know, it's, you know, getting 40, 45 years old and I'm sick and tired of going up and down ladders or sweating to death out there. It's not so, you know, much fun anymore. You know, I can go into sales. I can go into a management position because somebody like you had the foreknowledge to, to, uh, to, to create opportunity and grow a business. And uh, I think that's awesome. I, I think that's uh, uh, great that you have that vision uh, to be able to do that. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, Hey, it's gutters, but it's a great vehicle for creating opportunity for others. And I think that's great that you have that mindset and are doing it. So cool. Yeah. It's uh, it's really important um, that the guys have a great place to work, work and a place that they know we are passionate about doing a great job for customers um, where, you know, we try to make, you know, we try to do a perfect job for customers where their service from the time that they call the call center to meet the solutionist to meeting the team uh, before walkthrough and then after walkthrough after they're done, that that experience is like none other. And so, so far our reviews reflect that. And for my guys, like you're saying, Ken, the guys to be able to work somewhere, and I tell them this too, you know, to be able to work somebody somewhere and be able to pat themselves on the back for doing an awesome job, um, that's really important to, uh, an organization's culture and well culture when right there what you just said culture is something that you've done a very great job i mean i just saw a, an awesome picture that you just posted on facebook and instagram with all you guys going on a fishing trip and you guys you guys killed it you guys caught all these awesome fish and everything and you know adam uh me and him get to talk your sales rep uh once in a while he called me and stuff but you know to see that camaraderie that you've created between especially between sales and the field you know a lot of companies they struggle with that you know there's you know a culture problem typically where sales is pointing the finger at production and production's pointing the finger at sales but the level of communication and camaraderie and then being able to go out on a fishing trip like that and just get all the guys together i think you know that's it it just goes to show that um you know, what you're doing there is, is awesome. And it's, uh, you know, what you're creating there is definitely a long-term, uh, uh, it's long-term, it's long-term stability. And I think that that's one of the fears that we run into with, uh, you know, presenting a franchise uh, to people who are coming out of what you've come out of. Uh, that's the biggest fear is, um, am I going to be able to uh, be able to replace my income, but am I going to be able to have something that is sustainable over time that is going to be an asset uh, as well. So I, I appreciate you giving us some insight on your experience so far and, and um, you know, the opportunities that you're creating for people and making a difference in people's lives is huge. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got to write their own business um, mission statement, you know, brothers gutters mission statement is, uh, you know, reinventing contractor services. For us locally, you know, I've told the guys and, you know, eventually I'll, 
plaster this up on the wall when we have a bigger warehouse. But, um, you know, it's to create a safe, stable uh, organization um, so that they're not looking for a job. We're always booked out two to four weeks. And so to be able to create a safe uh, and stable company for you to not have to look for another job. Mm -hmm. But the kicker is to create a safe and stable organization with uh, growth opportunities for all. So not just the company, not just me, not just the salespeople, but for everybody. Awesome. And you know, I reiter reiterate that probably on a weekly basis, just to, just to remind them that, hey, you know, this is about creating a safe uh, career for you. It's not a job, you know, we, we have a pretty extensive interview process and I make sure that everybody knows that you know, if you're looking for a job or another quarter an hour or buck an hour, this is not the place for you. You're looking for a career where you want a safe and secure organization um, that has growth opportunities for all, this is it. Wow. Um, and as a pro, the exciting part for me is that, you know, the things that they need, I need too. So they need health benefits. I, I need that too. I don't, you know, I've got the VA. Um, I'm grateful to have a VA, but as you know, the VA system is not, not the crumb, the crumb, the crumb of healthcare. So I'd like health with myself for my family. And uh, those are things that they've communicated to me that, that they want. Um, as the company grows and we get to, you know, 1.5, 2 million and beyond, maybe a 401k plan, maybe a 401k plan with matching. What other contractor services has those types of benefits? Um, so, you know, those are legitimate companies that are offering that and being competitive with keeping great talent. And, uh, you know, those are the things that they know are coming as the company grows. That is awesome. So, I, I mean, one of the things that I've seen that why you're successful and it's become evident on this call is you have really focused on the foundational parts of your business. You did not, you know, I know you've gotten rid of a few people that were cancerous. Maybe they had talent, maybe they didn't, but you really did build the base. You grew systematically. You learned the parts of the business. Um, you held your team accountable for goals. You created culture. So you've definitely built something that has a strong foundation. And we all know that you have to have a foundation if you want to go high, you know, uh, if you just, you know, people can hire anybody. You can just put out an ad and you're going to get 50 applications and you could probably hire 10 of them if they show up to the interview. That doesn't make you a company. Your commitment to recruiting, you're in, just saying that you have an extensive interview process. Most people in the trades are afraid to have an extensive interview process because they know it's going to eliminate 95% of their candidates. But you have literally stuck to the hard stuff, recruiting, getting rid of people that don't fit the culture and you are in an awesome spot. You, you're at the two, three crew mark. And this is, and we've said it, the hardest part of this business is getting the three crews. And it's the hardest part of any service-based business. I don't care what you're doing. The three crew thing, I haven't found a business that it's easy and then it gets easy. So I just want to congratulate you with your reputation, the reviews that you get, the quality of the work that you do, um, how you represent the brand is just phenomenal. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now the million dollar question. All right. All right. So the reason why you bought this or anybody should buy a franchise or start their own business is to have something that could at least run without them for one to three months. How far away in years do you think that you are you know, we're in your, you're in your second full year. You started in 2018. It's 2020. Realistically, when do you think Rich Buyer can go take a month vacation and really not worry about checking his phone? I'm probably one to a year to a year and a half away from that. So, That's you know, incredible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, four years, four or five years in the business, um, and, you know, one thing that one caveat that I'd like to mention to, you know, whoever's listening to the podcast is that millions, if of, you're, millions of people, just so you know, <laughs> yeah. millions, of our, millions. So, you know, what are you willing to do 
to get there. And so that's that's kind of the other million dollar question. So I relate my business and my growth to, you know, what what are you willing to do? Um, I'm willing to work on Sunday to do payroll and scheduling and organizing and paying bills and, you know, filing stuff, uh, reaching out to customers. I'm willing to check emails at 11 o'clock at night. Um, the other day I got a validation call from somebody interested in buying this franchise. And at the time, he heard a whole bunch of noise in the background. And I said, sorry, I'm at the scrapyard because I'm unloading a whole bunch of metal. So I relate that to the restaurant owner, somebody that buys a restaurant or a restaurant franchise or, or, or something like that. The owner is all over the place. Would that own, so let's just say the bathrooms are stopped up. That owner is going to go clean the bathrooms because their employees are engaged in serving the customer. And that's where my business is right now. My employees are engaged in serving customers. They're getting the job done. To pull them off, to take trash out, to take scrap metal but to the scrap yard. No, that's what I'm willing to do. And um, it's not to say that somebody coming in without a team and they have somebody to do that sort of thing. Right now, I don't. A year from now, I will. I'll have somebody that, that can operate the day-to-day. -day. Somebody like me, you know, 10, 20 years ago that's willing to come in, either it's somebody that's going to grow up in our organization, like Ken said, somebody that's sick of getting up and down the ladder. Now I've got an opportunity for them. They can do all the ordering, all the scheduling, keep my warehouse um, nice and neat and organized, have everything laid out for the following day for every crew. And uh, I think that I'm probably about a year away from that. So, you know, another kind of uh, motto out there is that money solves everything. Sales, sales solves problems. Well, um, the sales has been the easy side of this business, getting more leads. Um, we've got two salesmen and they're both busy. When one or both don't become busy, I throw some money towards more ads. Uh, so far, three years in, all the ads are digital, but in the future, maybe I'll look at print or maybe I'll look at radio. Uh, maybe I'll look at a billboard and put a hiring sign on a busy highway or a busy uh, road. Um, but here down the road, money solves everything. Sales wow. solves everything. I'll have the ability to hire somebody that just does all the things that I do in a given week. I'll have an assistant, I'll have an operations manager, a field supervisor, I'll have two salespeople. Uh, either one of those two people can take the lead or a senior salesperson and kind of take a leadership position. Or I know that Brother Scudders just implemented a new program where you have somebody internally within the franchise system that can help uh, monitor the activity of your sales or your production or your administrative teams. So there's some more support from the franchise that I could take advantage of a year from now um, if I want to. So, yeah. you know, that, and that, that's, uh, that's, that is true freedom. Having a business that you take a month vacation or, you know, take a month off, uh, take a sabbatical, if you will, that's, um, that's true freedom right there. That's awesome. So what you described in there um, could, there's a fine line between um, what you described, checking emails on a Sunday, you know, 11 o'clock at night doing these things. Some people would say that's how you get burnt out. But what I would say and what you might agree with is there's, it's, it's not burnout if there's an end in sight. It's burnout if you see no end in sight and this is the rest of Rich Buyer's life is for the next 20 years, you're going to be checking emails on a Sunday, going to the scrapyard. I think that's how you get burnt out. But what, the, the difference is your vision. You know you're doing this, sacri you're sacrificing now. You're taking time in other, you know, you'd want to be watching a, a, a basketball game or whatever you want to be doing. It seems like you're willing to sacrifice that now because your freedom date is a year to two years from now. That is your turning over the business into the, the, the reason why you bought it. Does that go on in your head? Is that how you're processing that? Yeah, it, if, if I just bought myself a job and this is my job and I'm working Sundays and Saturdays and nighttime, 
yeah, that, that would burn me out pretty quickly. Then I would scratch my head and say, what did I just do? I just replaced a corporate job with all these benefits and a paycheck, a guaranteed paycheck every week with just a job. And you that can mentally not- check out when you get in your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. A corporate, yeah. With this, it's, uh, you know, it's 24 seven, you're always constantly thinking about things. So, you know, that there's there's not a right or wrong way to operate a business if that if you just want to be a guy with one truck or two trucks or you know a painter or a small business and that's all you want that's all you want to handle and you've got you, you're making the money that you want to make and you're happy god bless you um for me I, I need more than that so it's kind of one of those things where what you said hits the nail on the head is that i'm building so that eventually I won't have to do those things, but I'm willing to do now. It's uh, what, what are you willing to do now so that you have um, a benefit in the future? And yeah. so there's definitely site. Um, absolutely. And we've seen it across the board, you know, just in franchising and just in being part and, and friends with a lot of business owners, it seems the, if, the more you're willing to sacrifice in the beginning, the quicker you get to your goal. Um, A lot of people make the mistake of like, I own a business, I'm going to pay myself a lot. And you know what, you might be able to, but then you're just going to hold on to hats way longer. It's going to stifle the business. The guys that get successful fast are the ones that are like, all right, what's the minimum I need to pay myself for the first six months or a year? How am I going to make that work? And when they just, it seems like if they're willing to, just like you said, work their tail off, sacrifice the reward is so much faster um, than the people that kind of don't want to sacrifice um, anything. Yeah. And, and the other thing holds true in this business is that some days I'm off at three. My guys are done at two or three. I get them out of the hot sun. My sales guys are self-sufficient and at three o'clock I'm at the pool with my kids. So, you know, I have days like that too. Um, yeah. Just because, I want to do some menial tasks like paying bills and filing at 11 o'clock. If you want to do that at three, you could be done by five or six. So, you know, it's not like an exorbitant work week. Um, But the point being is that what are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice now so that you can have that lifestyle? How quickly can I grow this with the right team members going, achieving the company's goals for yourself and for your entire team? And how quickly can you achieve that? Because one thing, you know, again, through the interview process is that the common thread is that everybody that I have, even if they're an apprentice, they want to be a crew leader someday. Mm -hmm. Um, So if I don't provide them with that opportunity, um, then the company's not growing. Yeah. So um, you you want to be able to provide everybody with the opportunity that you you constantly talk about. Otherwise, you know, you're not providing with anything. And at some point they'll realize, well, this company's not going anywhere. I better jump ship and go to a company that does have the growth, that does have that next opportunity for me. That's great. So and kind that's of- it right there. That what you just said about uh, uh, lifestyle. You know, it, all, a lot of people I think have a false sense of reality of a lifestyle that they pictured for themselves, but aren't willing to do the work of the work to get that lifestyle and you know you're you're a perfect example of somebody that's willing to do it you're willing to do the work of the work to 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 have a certain type of lifestyle and i think most people definitely want to see growth in their careers in their life and i think they want to not just go to work all the time uh even though what they do they might be passionate about or even love it but I feel that probably most people just do it just because that's all that they know to do. You know, imagine uh, being able to do what you're able to do and, and the forethought to be able to say, you know, man, I'm only going to, as I continue to scale and create opportunities for others in this business, um, I'm not going to have to, you know, I'll be able to do whatever I want with my time. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, being able to get off of work or take a day off or a month off, um, you know, that's to me, and I think this probably is something that we, you know, me and you have discussed in the past. That's true freedom, right? Mm-hmm. And I think most people want freedom. 
yep. you know, what do, what do we, at the end of the day, I think we all want to be free uh, to be able to live whatever life we want, whether it's being in the pool all day with the kids or going away to travel to some other place or, uh, you know, just being able to experience life the way we want to experience it. And this is, this is, this, this, what this vehicle that we have here for this business uh, enables us to do that, but it also enables others to be able to grow with inside the business as well and help them uh, to achieve what they want to achieve. So I think that experience and the life experience that we can create uh, and that you've been able to create a, a, as a result uh, of this uh, vehicle, I think is pretty incredible uh, in the amount of time, especially that you're doing it in. So cool. Thanks. So let's just recap real quick. I mean, I love what you said earlier about, you know, even when you were purchasing a franchise, you said you don't have to be passionate about it. I mean, no one wakes up and like, I love gutters. Ever since I was a kid, I just loved gutters. Like nobody does that. Yeah. But you, you son, like the home my services. Son Hunter, my son Hunter did. Well, he was exposed to it. You know, his dad's <laughs> mind's been in the gutter since he's a kid. So, of course. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, this isn't you know, one of those sexy necessarily trades or people want to be doctors, <laughs> lawyers, and firemen and teachers. Um, nobody wakes up saying, you know, I'm going to be, you know, a gutter person or even a roofer. But I love that you said that something that interested you, not necessarily passion. I thought that was a really cool thing that you loved home services, you looked at painting, it was saturated. Um, and then you looked at gutters and, and there seemed to be an opportunity to build a company um, in, in kind of like an underserviced part of the trades. I think that was so cool. And then pulling the trigger on it, really building a team, like the stuff that you talked about, building a team, having the corporate America experience, the sales experience, all of that um, to now your vision to being, I mean, in, in three to four years to have a company that can run without you. I mean, people have been doing their businesses their entire lives and, and can't even take a weekend off. Or if they go golfing for a day, their phone's blowing up. Incredible for you to be able to do and take everything that you've brought to the table, um, implement it with our system. And within four years, having something that could can run without you. Um, so I think that's awesome. And I think you talked about a lot of the, the, the great stuff uh, in there. Uh, any kind of closing uh, consolidating thoughts or advice? I just think that this business is great for somebody that has an entrepreneurial bug. They've got a little bit of management or leadership in their background and they want to achieve what Ken said. They want to achieve that freedom. Um, listen, I'm a guy that gave the military, you know, between 60 to 80 hours of my life per week and was happy to do that. And then I got to corporate America and of course they wanted to hire me because they knew that I was going to give them 60 to 70 plus hours a week, um, and work nights and weekends and travel and do whatever they asked me to do. And I did, I was a good soldier. Um, and then at some point in your life, you wake up and you say, you know what, I don't want to relocate anymore. I don't want to hop on a plane anymore. When my youngest daughter was born, uh, I worked for a company and I was gone uh, two to three weeks out of every month traveling uh, out of the, the other side of the country. And so I, I feel like I lost like maybe that first year of her life. And I'm like, you know what, this is not worth it. So what's worth it to you? If you're, you know, if you're willing to do it for somebody else for a paycheck, what are you willing to do for yourself? Wow. And so for me, I mean, you know, after so long, it just became a no brainer. And then it was, all right, well, I'm going to hunker down. You know, I really, you know, my, you asked me about my goals. I really, want to get this on autopilot. That's what, uh, you know, you've got good people on the bus. Everybody's doing what they need to be doing. You've got operations, got scheduling, got sales, and everybody's doing a great job. And I'm providing an opportunity for them to move up and grow and make more money and hopefully offer some benefits in the future. Um, I would like to, you know, reinvest a part of my time to helping other guys like me. Um, I've always laughed and joked. It's like, hey, you know, even if you have an MBA, you can be successful and own your own business too. You know, it's like, you know, just, yeah, 
You know, think about that one. It's like, you know, you're 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 an MBA, you're working in corporate America, you think you're successful, but you're not happy. You know, you want something more. So the people that this Brothers Gutters franchise is, is great for are the people where they look around at their communities. What what does this community need? Wow, there's a lot of construction going on, there's a lot of new homes going up, there's a lot of businesses going up, there's a lot of growth happening. You know, and that's what I looked at in Jacksonville. I think like, there's a lot of growth happening in, in the residential market. Um, I want to take a look at home services. So you start narrowing down industries that interest you, and um, you do you do your due diligence, mm. and you, you find another opportunity for yourself. And the reason why I'm passionate about franchises is the cost of capital is relatively low. The access to capital is available, you know, hopefully if you have good credit and, um, you know, it, it gets you out sort of out of the rat race. I mean, you're not going to be any less busy than you were before for a certain period of time. But at some point in that time, like you said, Ryan, at some point, you know, you've built something that's sustainable and the success for me is to build a company that does a great job for your customers and you don't have to be there. Um, yeah. It can, can operate and live with or without you. And, you know, look at all the best companies in the world. Um, Home Depot, that CEO could take, you know, a year off and nobody would know because he's got um VPs doing all of this work for him. Um, now that might be a bad example, but the, the the original owner of Home Depot, he's probably not even with Home Depot anymore. Well, look you know at Apple. I mean? so, you know, Steve Jobs is not even with us anymore, and look at their dominance. Some, some of Apple's yeah. greatest products came after Steve Jobs was not even involved in the business anymore. So, um, the same concept goes with this. You know, you put in hard work, and you know, but it starts with a dream. It starts with that entrepreneurial bug, and you know, I think veterans would be a great fit for this. I think corporate execs that are disillusioned by the travel and the amount of time that they're away from their families or the umpteen relocations around the country. Um, those guys that, you know, wish and hope that they might have more family time. I mean, you know, I schedule my own day. So if I need to be somewhere for my kids in the middle of the day, I go do that. I don't have to ask anybody for permission. You know, so that's the beginning stages of, of freedom and choice and what you do with your day. Um, right here, I'm on this call right now, and my guys are out working. So, you know, so it's, um, it's you got to have that entrepreneurial bug and you got to have that desire to kind of grow something. And going back to my original thought about franchises, that's why I like franchising is because it only takes a certain amount of money to get in. You mm -hmm. have that a really great brand behind you and trying to do this on your own is extremely costly and it'll take you a lot more time. Um, so, you know, it's just a nice alternative for, for people to consider. That's awesome. Right. So back to the investment, what you said is 150,000 uh, express loan that it, people can get through the SBA and we are an SBA approved franchise. And then with, yeah. you know, as long as somebody has a 680 credit score or better uh, and $30,000 in the bank, they're a shoe in for that express loan, uh, a shoe in. Um, and most people these days are buying cars that are anywhere from 40 to, to $40,000 and up and they're getting 0% financing for a car and that doesn't get them any money, you know, <laughs> You know how how easy is it to get one hundred fifty thousand? Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty reasonable, especially to get the results that we're talking about here that you're seeing in your business and so many other franchisees that we have uh, that are, are 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 going. So you know one thing that um, a lot of people ask um, too is that you know uh, they're looking they're looking for uh, a business. Yeah, you're gonna have to start it up. But, you know, how long does it take to get to semi-passive and then eventually to passive is, you know, or is your business model semi-passive? I have somebody who wants semi-passive right now or, you know, passive. So um, in our business, I think that you can 
you can choose you can choose right what 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 you, what you want based on you know what 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 effort gets put into it right out the gate um and the capital that you infuse into it um but it seems to me that um in two to three years people can be at a startup pretty quickly in this business hmm. interesting yeah you know you don't have to start with 150,000 you can start with 500,000 if that's what you have and your path to growth is going to be way quicker than my path to growth um mine was fairly conservative i wore many hats as we we've discussed on this call uh, for other people, that's not the right decision. They don't want to do the accounting and the books. They don't want to do the scheduling and the ordering. Um, you know, I was willing to do those things, but at some point, I'm not going to be willing to do those things. And so somebody out of the gates that's not willing to do those things, that's okay. Um, if you have a little bit more capital or you want to take uh, less, less in the first year, invest more in the business and your people, in order to grow later, that's a great strategy as well. And so, well, people yeah. is a key word that you just said right there. People, human resources, right? Human resources are the resources by which we create depth and opportunity within our businesses to have that fast growth, right? When we're hiring talent, you know, the system is established, the brand is established, the marketing is established, the sales are not an issue, getting leads is not an issue. I can dump more money into that, but I think where people uh, where where some people miss the bucket when it or, or the boat when it comes to uh, growing a business and getting it at a startup, it's really the investment that you make into the human resources side of things and getting those humans in the right buses, like you said earlier, and like Jim Collins talks about in Good to Great, is that's the key right there. You know, the faster that we can get those human resources in there, and if somebody did start with a bigger level of investment going into the business instead of starting with one truck and, and no back office admin. There's definitely room for people to take the system and to catapult it faster forward by infusing uh, more people, right? More people to do those things. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, absolutely what you're saying, you, you can do it that way. If you're a guy like me and you have good recruiting skills, you could find someone in the country that wants to get off the ladder, Some there, someone that's in there, you know, between 40 and 50 or 35 and 55, they've got 10, 20, 30 years of gutter experience. They know everything about gutters, but let's just say maybe their credit's not great or their business acumen is not great. Yours is, your credit is great. You know how to run a business. You find those people that want to be a business owner with you and you let them run the company. Um, finding an accountant to do the bookkeeping or an administrative assistant to do the scheduling and, and things like that, responding to customers. And that part's, you know, fairly easy. You can find those people locally. Um, but, you know, that's a great strategy is to find somebody that wants to get off the ladder, that has the experience, that wants to come help you run your business. Uh, and maybe it's for an equity spot. Maybe they want to be an owner as well, but they can't. And, you know, you have either income or benefits or maybe an equity play. Um, you can find some really great talent and you can grow, you can really grow this business uh, very rapidly, uh, way, way quicker than I did if you had somebody like that on your team. And so I'm constantly, yeah, go so ahead. So when we get the call from somebody who's like, hey, listen, I'm looking for a semi-passive uh, business opportunity, um, we could probably say, in your opinion, yes, but it's not for the 150000 that we normally post. We would say, you're gonna, if you want it to be semi-passive, you're going to want to have a, more money available to hire the positions that you're not willing to do. But in reality, yeah, we can train everyone to do everything that we'd be training you to do if you wanted to kind of have it as a semi-passive. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, especially if they come to the, the, the deal with someone who has the experience but doesn't have those two things. They don't have the money, they don't have the credit, or they don't have the business acumen to run a, run a company, but they know everything about gutters. They, they're good trainers. They're good kind of operations managers. And you give them an opportunity to help you get what you want, which is a passive business. Wow. Um, so I think that those people are out there. It takes a bit of uh, digging and recruiting, or maybe you already know somebody that's in the trades, somebody that's a project manager for a company that wants to 
help you get a construction company or contracting company off the ground. Somebody that wants to be a business partner. Yeah. Um, to yeah. Well, we've done it, right? We've done it. We, that's why we kept our corporate location in New York, uh, Brothers Gutters Hudson Valley. Brian and I have personally been able to do that with this business uh, to have people in place that are running the production, running the sales, running the back office. Um, mm -hmm. So it's definitely something that's part of our model. We keep that corporate example as part of the model and actually to, you know, inspire people like you and others that want to take this business past uh, semi-passive and to, and to passive. And there's other franchisees that are doing that and on, are already on that path. So yep. that's, that's awesome. And I can't wait and to I, see that in, uh, in your business. And we need to all go on a fishing trip to, to Florida. Yes. One that, that Adam, I'm land, gonna, not, not me. Hey, you come down here, help me out. And at the end of the week, we're going fishing. I'm in. Yeah, we had, yeah. Um, you know, the nice thing for you guys after doing this for as long as you guys have been doing it and then franchising for the last five, six years, um, is you have every model, right? You have people that, um, that have a passive business now. You have other people that are more in it, um, like myself. And you have smaller comp uh, smaller franchisees that only have maybe one or two vehicles, um, smaller teams. And there's no wrong answer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have the husband wife team. That's beautiful too, because the husband can you know focus on one area of the business, and then the the wife, the spouse can focus on another area of the business. Now yep. you're both in it, and so that that brings a, a huge uh, dynamic. You know, you're not. You're not needing to pay an admin or, you know, um, not to say that the wife's going to be the admin, maybe the husband would be the admin, but you're not having to pay that for another person. You got a husband, wife team. So that, that is, um, you've got every, every example right now, you've got passive business owners. You've got just a one or two crews, smaller business. You've got husband, wife teams. And then now you're starting to attract, um, guys that want to come in and, want to grow something they want to keep their job and they want something on the side well for those people they come to the table with a, a good solid team or good experience or good expertise like a project manager or somebody that's got got our experience and wants to get off the ladder yeah absolutely so i think that this opportunity is for really anybody wow well, that's awesome. awesome. Well, Rich, I just want to thank you for being on today this was such a awesome call chock full of knowledge um, really appreciate what you've done and how you represent our brand and, and being part of our team. Looking I forward to continued it. growth with you and uh, let's do it. All right. I always appreciate your support, Ken and Ryan, but also a shout out to the marketing team and uh, to the contact center. And of course, uh, Job and, and team that offers uh, a lot of, um, help and support and of course uh, the sales team as well for the monthly conference calls with my sales team so lots of support much appreciated and uh, on to bigger and better things for all of us oh thanks. man but seriously thanks that was so great really appreciate it there was a lot of value there all right thanks guys have a great day absolutely all right take care bye bye all right. thanks for joining us and we hope you implement at least one or two nuggets from this episode that will give you the confidence to grow Subscribe to our podcast to stay updated and grow with the bros.